bells of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. Don we now our gay apparel. Fa la 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 la. Troll the ancient Yuletide carol. Fa la 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 la. I hope I don't disappoint you with the subject of this video. I am just going to share my enthusiasm, because I can't help myself, with regards to my Coilostylus Parkinsonianum. I have added a little bit of a Tolumnia touch of color in the background in the hopes that it breaks the monotony of seeing an orchid that has absolutely no blooms on it whatsoever. And also, let me just say, if you're watching this any time outside of the holiday season, um, yeah, Christmas intro, there you go. Because it is this time of year that the Coilostylus Parkinsonianum is doing what it is doing. And I need to show you why I love this orchid even when it is not in bloom. This orchid is difficult to film at best. When it is in bloom, it is even more difficult because blooms point in all directions. So thank you very, very much for your interest. If you're gonna watch this video all the way through, I appreciate your time. And I hope that you do enjoy the content and the enthusiasm that I have for an orchid that is not in bloom. Did I say Coilostylus Parkinsonianum? Well, let me correct myself. I am mixing two names here. It used to be called Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. It is now Coilostylus Parkinsoniana. So just that little correction right there. What you see in front of you is of course the top of the pot and you see a little stake poking out. And that is a previous year's growth. I was trying to direct it towards the light source. What you see now in the back here is precisely why I want to film this orchid and talk to you about it this time of year while it's not in bloom. Look at this new growth coming out. The light source is over here. It should bend this way, hence, the little stake. Uh, that didn't work. <laughs> it is going wherever it wants to go. Honestly, where this one lives at this point in time, this is the darker side of the room. So we have an orchid that will not respond to light training, no matter our attempts to do so. The pendant nature of this orchid is obviously its charm. What is very difficult to see when this orchid is in bloom usually around June and July, is the marvelous way that it grows. Mine is right now in active growth this time of year, which is scary because obviously this time of year, we've got the colder months in my hemisphere here in Southern Spain. And right now it is pushing growth like crazy. And I am very happy that it is doing so. It is a critical time though. So we have one growth up here, Yes, it's almost out of shot. I'm not gonna bend it down because they're quite delicate and we'll get to that. This little one right here is also pushing a new growth. I have a growth coming out right up here and I have a growth coming out right down here. All of that. Stunning. Now I'm geeking out over this orchid, not only because I love its shape, I love its pendant habit, but also because it is so nice to see new growths coming. The danger at this point in time is the growths at the tip breaking, even just the tip of the leaf. It won't impede the rest of the growth, but every year I have a challenge with this orchid, and maybe if you have this orchid as well, can you confirm it, or is it just me? I break the tips every single year. There's not one leaf on here that hasn't gotten some form of damage through handling or also environmental because of the lack of humidity. Now in December, this time of year, December, January, I normally have a higher humidity than during the rest of the year, but this orchid needs a lot, a lot of humidity. That is one of the factors, but to have a tip like this right at the edge of the pot there, I make sure that it stays completely clear of the shelf and there's nothing stopping it from growing. 
Eventually, these new growths, maybe not this one, but I am expecting this one in the back now to grow because this was my new lead of 2020. Maybe this one will bloom. I am hopeful that this one will bloom because we have a previously blooming growth right here. Definitely, definitely certain that this one will bloom, bar any accidents from here on in. And you can see that this growth right here is all the way down to the bottom. Excuse my cleaning tub down there. But you see how long this is getting? And this one will get long and go the same length if everything goes well. So this orchid, like I said, filming it is difficult and in bloom even more so. But I did want to share with you how the growths come out of the Coilostylus parkinsonianum because when we see an orchid like this in bloom, we don't understand where the growths come out and, well, we enjoy the blooms. That's all part and parcel of growing these beauties, right? But it is important to factor in where the growing points are to be anticipated, what to be careful of if you're growing Epidendrum Parkinsonianum, and how to best nurture those growths so that they can develop to their full potential without breaking the ends. I'm gonna get it right one day. I'm gonna get it right one day. Every year I tell myself, these are the growths, I'm gonna get it right. This is also the time when Coelostylus parkinsoniana starts to grow roots. Now this is an epiphytic orchid, make no mistake of it, I have it in Lekka and self-watering. Thankfully, because my dry humidity here in southern Spain just doesn't, doesn't accommodate this orchid unless I do something radical with it. But you can see a new root is growing right here. And there's another one in the back. Now this makes me very happy because normally this orchid will grow its roots based on where the new growths come out. So this root up here, this also makes me very happy because, you know, roots in a pot, that's what we want. What I'm anticipating this orchid will do one day is actually do what it does in nature and it grows new roots at the base of a growth. And this is where it's going to become interesting with regards to my setup. And I'm putting all these thoughts out there because if we one day do another care collab or an update, then at least I have this footage to show for because this was the orchid in question when one day talking with Michael McCarthy that EpiWeb was too expensive and how am I going to accommodate the new roots of a Coilostylus parkinsoniana when, not if, but when they grow out right bang smack in the middle of the growth right here, exposed to the ambient air and environment. And that is when the whole conversation with EpiWeb started and in my head I said it's far too expensive and he then pointed me in the direction of scrubby pads. So this is going to be interesting every year now since I've started along the journey of scrubby pads and then graduated to hob filter material, anything inorganic and fluffy. This is the orchid that started all of that and it's going to be interesting what will happen this coming season and that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention because it is possible that one day I'm going to have an orchid in a pot but there will be a structure behind it like a mount to accommodate any aerial roots that come from this orchid because as with a lot of my collection and maybe with your collection we can accommodate an orchid we can provide for its needs the requirements are very, very apt for our situation, circumstances and grow environment. But once the orchid matures and grows and gets bigger, its needs also increase. And we need to be prepared for that and have a plan in place for when that were to happen. So apart from showing you how wonderfully I'm getting new growths on my Coilostylus parkinsoniana, I'm also telling you that I have a plan B in place this orchid needs to be repotted. For one, she hasn't since she's been in my collection because I've been very tentative about making sure that she gets big, established and healthy before I mess with the roots. If you've been on my channel long enough, you know that I don't like to go beyond three years being my maximum to when I address a pot once again, especially in Lekka and Self, watering, keeping the oxygen flow going. But this one, since it has come to my collection, has not been touched. And the reason I've given myself an extra margin of time 
is because of the fine roots that this orchid has. Fine roots, mix of leca, small, large, medium, it's all mixed in there. I've allowed myself extra time because the roots aren't large and chunky and I think I'm gonna be okay with the health of the pot and the climate of the pot and that's why I'm extending my repotting to possibly next year. Should this orchid collapse in the meantime and something go horribly wrong, of course I will address it straight away, but I wanted a strong orchid before I mess with it. She was not easy to get established in a pot for the roots to accept going down into the media. This one is epiphytic as epiphytic as epiphytic as they come. Surprisingly, I still have no roots coming from these growths, but this one is now a time to watch. I'm ready with plan B and I want to say thank you once again to Michael McCarthy. This was the trigger orchid that brought out this whole thing about scrubby pads as opposed to EpiWeb and then it evolved into hob material which became my inorganic mounts. That is Coilostylus parkinsoniana. I love this orchid, I have to tell you. If you're still here, thank you so very, very much. This orchid was bought because of the name. My father had Parkinson's. I have found an orchid, a little Phalaenopsis that is named Peter, but I haven't been able to purchase that yet. But when I saw this one with Parkinson's, this was the reason I got this orchid. So she is precious to me. I grow her in memory of my father. And that is why I'm so tentative with everything I've just mentioned about going against my golden rules on repotting. And I am ready and equipped with the idea of a structure to support any aerial roots that this orchid might throw out. I am hoping that we can get to that point because A, she is strong enough for repotting, but it's the wrong time of year, and B, plan B is in place when the time comes. No blooms, but I hope Tulumia pink brished in the background there broke up the monotony, and I hope that you still found this video interesting, and I want to say thank you so very, very much for your time. It is not often that we see orchids at active growth. We want to see the blooms and everything, but this is a different caliber of orchid. And on researching this orchid, I actually never saw this orchid while in active growth to understand what its needs are. And it is just amazing to suddenly see needles come out of somewhat nowhere. Fabulous. I love this orchid so, so much. If you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you have any ideas, let me know. Anything about this orchid that you know that would help to fill in the blanks of certain things I may not know. Maybe I don't know that I don't know. <laughs> All of that good stuff. Please put that in the comments below. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day on condition that you please stay safe and take care. Bye.